Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the original Xbox One is undoubtedly one of the cheapest ways to get into gaming right now. While it can still run every game out there designed for the Xbox platform, it certainly doesn't give you perfect visuals or a flawless frame rate, especially when it comes to the latest releases. Launched in 2013, the Xbox One got off to a rocky start in part thanks to fierce competition from Sony's PlayStation 4, which I think it's fair to say is holding up a bit better these days. That being said, this bulky black box representing Microsoft's first foray into the 8th generation of gaming can be picked up for far less than it costs to build a PC capable of comparative performance, at the moment anyway. Despite this, I wanted to see what PC hardware we'd need to actually keep up with it in a handful of the most demanding games currently available. So I picked up this bruised and beaten example for £120. It came with all the necessary cables, one controller and even Kinect, for what that's worth. Years ago, let's say back in 2015, it wasn't impossible to build a PC for a similar price as the Xbox One and get similar performance from it because 8th gen was still in its infancy, games weren't as demanding and graphics card prices weren't through the roof. Not to mention anyone trying to build a console killer PC for a similar price had a higher price to actually work with as the Xbox Ones themselves were still more costly. What does it take then to match or outperform this old man in 2021? Let's start off easy. This motherboard bundle consists of an Athlon 3000G dual-core CPU, 8 gigs of 2400MHz DDR4 RAM, and in the PCI Express slot sits a used HD7850 that I picked up for £50. It has 2 gigs of GDDR5 and still supports the latest graphics drivers. During the 7 plus years that the Xbox has been out for now, PC hardware has changed a lot and games have got more demanding. This doesn't matter as much on console because games are always optimised specifically for that hardware, though we are at the point now when more and more sacrifices are being made to try and maintain 30fps even at sub 1080p resolution. Early 8th gen games or those that are cross platform with the 7th gen Xbox 360 will run quite well with visually impressive settings using this Athlon and 7850 combo. An HD 7770 or 7790 is actually the technical GPU equivalent and again while either of those could likely hold a 30 FPS ish frame rate as well they are going to struggle way more in newer releases. Then again so is this 7850 and the Athlon. Let's take a look at some newer games and I'll show you what I mean. So the beauty of PC gaming is that we can turn down the visual options until we hit the desired FPS target, but this still ultimately depends on whether the hardware you have can hit the frame rates you have in mind. The hardware I'm using to play those earlier 8th gen titles with relative ease will wreak havoc with performance in newer games. Sometimes it's the graphics card holding us back, and sometimes it's the processor. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example, won't even start with an aging 7850, and while the performance on the Xbox One might be less than ideal, it still runs. So then, what do we need as a minimum PC hardware wise to at least match performance of the Xbox? What I've got here is a Dell T3500 featuring an old W3520 quad core Xeon, 12 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive. The processor has four cores and eight threads and is equivalent to a desktop i7-920. The Xeon can be found for less than a tenner and I paid just shy of £100 for this entire system. I've slapped an entry level 4 gigabyte RX 550 in here as well. This is one of the cheapest AMD cards on the market or it was before the whole sky high prices thing happened. If we jump back into Red Dead Redemption 2 here with Digital Foundry's console equivalent settings and a resolution of 1600 by 900 then we do come close to the same 30 FPS target implemented by the Xbox One though we are using a slightly higher resolution here for the sake of maintaining a full screen aspect ratio on PC. Of course, matching console visuals isn't as straightforward as just adjusting a few options on PC because consoles handle things differently and there are going to be some unique options exclusive to the Xbox One for example that help it hit or come close to the desired frame rate. Before switching graphics cards again, I retested RDR2 with the low settings while keeping textures on Ultra and found that even then we were seeing just three or so frames more with the console settings we had enabled beforehand. 
For those wondering, the RX 550 also falls slightly short of 30 FPS with reduced texture quality as well. But it's a valiant effort for this entry level GPU, that's for sure. And don't forget that we are using a slightly higher resolution than the base Xbox One. Let's swap it out for this then, a 4GB RX 460. A popular entry level GPU that has unfortunately also succumbed to huge price hikes at the moment. Back in Red Dead with the console settings again here, and the 460 gives us that 30 FPS experience that we came so close to beforehand but couldn't quite hit. We're seeing slightly better than 30 here while running at the slightly higher than Xbox One resolution, experiencing similar dips in busier towns as you would on Microsoft's entry level 8th gen console. For a smoother experience, enabling a 30 FPS VSync cap would be a good idea, and any drops in performance will feel less significant by doing so. Furthermore, the visuals here are set up to match Digital Foundry's Xbox One X equivalent settings, so I'm not sure if there are any other downgrades outside of the reduced resolution for the base consoles. If there are, well, this is a testament then to the cheap Xeon and 460 combo. Moving on to Battlefield 5, and on the base Xbox One, this game runs at a dynamic 1080p, but it frequently drops below this and spends a lot of time at 1280 by 720 so a 720p experience for the most part. 720p for the 460 is too easy, so I decided to settle on a 900p middle ground instead, and a mixture of settings that I feel give us a nice balance between visual quality and performance. On the console, the game targets 60 FPS, but will fall below this. And while we do see some drops on this PC, it does provide a pretty decent close to 60 FPS experience for the most part. I found that the hyper threading of the Xeon here was almost essential in preventing harsh dips with frame times, and out of curiosity, I also tried playing the game with the original 3000G slash 7850 combo that did a great job with older games tested at the start, namely Fallout and GTA. Here as expected, this just didn't go well, but as I said, it was to be expected. The cheap Xeon so far is still pretty impressive and it's nice to see the 460 holding up okay as well. I'd certainly recommend a quad core 8 threaded chip for Battlefield on PC as a lack of hyper threading or SMT can have a detrimental effect on the frame times. So I didn't know whether to include this or not but uh, what I want to do now is briefly mention Cyberpunk. From what I've seen the Xbox One still struggles to run this game with frequent frame dips below 30 FPS and a resolution that hovers around sub 900p but drops to less than 720p. Because of this you could say that this PC config actually does just as well, which isn't really anything to celebrate but it will hit 30 FPS at times with a dynamic resolution that I've set up to drop as low as 80% of 1080p to try and maintain the target frame rate. We'll revisit this game after a few more updates on all platforms I think. At this point I thought about changing the hardware, but I think that the W3520 and RX460 represent an entry level next gen experience setup, and one that's just about enough for 30 FPS in what are considered demanding games. Another example is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. On the Xbox it runs at a dynamic 900p, dropping below 720p on occasion, and of course targets, but doesn't consistently hit 30 FPS. Here are the settings that I use to try and create a nice balance once again between visual quality and performance on the PC. I've also implemented a dynamic 900p resolution as well which keeps a 30fps target in mind. You might be able to pick up on the occasional micro stutters which I'm attributing to the hard drive in the system. Even for the minimum specs, Ubisoft recommend an SSD and it's clear to see why. Switching to a solid state drive and locking the game to a 30fps target does seem to iron out these dips, so while the hardware is capable of maintaining a 30fps average, a traditional hard drive might cause you problems, particularly in busier settlements. Or it might just be that the hard drive in this thing is on its way out, who knows. I couldn't find much data regarding Black Ops Cold War, but I believe Warzone runs at a dynamic 900p, targeting 60fps, though on the Xbox One there are of course drops below this. It's more of a 40 to 60fps experience. I therefore decided to use a static 900p native res for the PC again, tweaking the visuals in an attempt to combine quality and performance, while getting things to look similar to console. With our Xeon and 460 combo, we saw a close to 60fps result a lot of the time, and sometimes we exceeded this, other times we dropped closer toward 40, but 
the overall experience was pretty enjoyable. When playing online, the performance will change quite a bit depending on the map that you choose. For example, the Moscow map performed a bit better than Nuketown, despite the latter's smaller size. The average and percentile figures have been combined to create these averages. Either way, all of the maps are going to run fine on this hardware at the aforementioned 40 to 60 FPS threshold at native 900p. Now as we move through 2021, I'll be testing this system in comparison to the base Xbox One with some new releases, hopefully setting up some proper frame counting software by then so that we can actually perform side by side tests and get an exact grasp on the base 8th gen console's performance as it moves toward what seems like the end of its life. Having said that though, I think it's going to go out fighting and anyone looking to get into gaming on a super tight budget should still consider one, especially while PC hardware prices are so high. Furthermore, this video was just for fun. A huge benefit of PC gaming, as I mentioned earlier, is that you can choose your settings and probably run all of today's tested games at a much better frame rate than the Xbox One with lower graphical options, especially if you select 720p. The plan today, though, was to try and see what sort of hardware it would take to match or exceed an entry-level console experience, and I think the Xeon and 460 are both good fits at the moment, though this is subject to change. As for this one then, well thank you very much for watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.